green list of five things that I think could, should, or will happen in the next two weeks. And the first of them is this. The Cowboys need to trade for Russell Wilson, even if it means letting Dak Prescott walk away for nothing. It sounds crazy because it is, but here's the situation. Let me explain it to you. The Cowboys have negotiated themselves into a corner from which they cannot get out when it comes to Dak Prescott. Here's the situation they find themselves in. If they bring him back on the franchise tag this year, and Chris Canty, my former Cowboy, I'm going to start with you with your thoughts on this. If they bring him back this year, they pay him $38 million, and then he walks away for nothing next year, and you lose out on the opportunity, maybe a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, to get Russell Wilson if you can do it right now. So that is my thinking. It's not a great situation, but it's not a great solution, I should say, to what is a terrible situation, but it's the best I can think of. What do you think? Here's what I will say. I'll agree with you that Russell Wilson represents an upgrade from Dak Prescott in terms of overall talent. But when you look at the situation and what it would take to get Russell Wilson for, from Seattle, the compensation that would have to go back to the Seahawks, to me it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense because when you weigh that versus what you would get from Dak Prescott, you know you're going to be on the losing end of that when it comes to draft capital. So to me, based on where the Cowboys are at with their salary cap and with their team right now and, and that core getting a little bit older, it just makes sense to try to stay with Dak Prescott and retain as much draft capital as you possibly can. They need to figure out how to get this deal done. They need to extend Dak beyond 2020. But I think the best option for the Cowboys at quarterback is to stay with that. I'll point out again that Russell Wilson's agent on the record gave a list of teams he'd be interested in trading to to Adam Schefter. And one of those is the Dallas Cowboys. Rob Ninkovich, what do you think? Well, the big question is Pete Carroll looks like one of the nicest guys in the best head coach of, of a player's coach. And you can get along with Pete Carroll. You think that if Russell Wilson wasn't happy with Seattle and his ability to, to help uh, bring in offensive linemen or his input. You think Jerry Jones is going to listen to Russell Wilson on his input? And you think Jerry Jones and Russell Wilson will just have a great marriage together? When you look at the Cowboys in general, it's basically, it's basically Jerry Jones making all the moves and being the head coach, being the GM, doing everything for that team himself. So I don't know if that would be a great fit for Russell Wilson to go into Dallas and think that it's going to be better than his relationship with Pete Carroll. Because Pete Carroll, I mean, honestly, he looks pretty cool. I know he's the oldest coach in the league, but guess what? He seems like he's a cool guy to hang out with, right? I'm with that, but here's what I will say. Every time I look up in that box that Jerry Jones sits in, all of his former quarterbacks are sitting in there, right? I mean, he's constantly, he kept Jason Garrett around forever. He played quarterback for the Cowboys. I think Tony Romo was his closest friend in the entire world. Jerry likes the quarterbacks, and I think he might enjoy giving Russell Wilson some say in all this. Field Yates, what do you think? So I wish that Russell Wilson's preferred destination, Screeny, weren't the four teams that he picked because none of them is equipped to make an offer that I think satisfies what Seattle wants. I agree with everything Chris said. Russell Wilson, better than Dak Prescott. The price you got to pay, that's significant. The most that the Cowboys could offer right now in terms of first-round picks at right now is three first-round picks. You are only allowed to trade at the moment two drafts ahead. So is Seattle really going to take the 10th overall pick in the draft and then two picks that would project to be somewhere in the 20s, maybe even the late 20s from Dallas? The answer is probably not. Is he an upgrade? Yes. Is it realistic? Most likely not. And I know that Dak and the contract situation has been an absolute roller coaster for the Cowboys. I do think sometimes, though, Greeny, we lose some of the context about Dak Prescott and how much he's meant to the Cowboys. So... Having Dak as your long-term answer for Dallas, to me, is not some dramatic consolation prize. I really do believe if there's middle ground to find, the Cowboys are in a good spot going forward. I don't think so. I don't think Dak, Dak has given no indication he's interested in any middle ground. And his, the, the beginning, the asking price, the basement, is $38 million because that's what he's getting paid this year. I don't see how they figure this out with Dak. This is much less about Dak to me than it is about the contract. Okay. My list of the things that could, should, and will happen this offseason. Let's get next to the Chicago Bears. They have a ton of questions at quarterback. Generally speaking, they've had them for 101 years since they were the Decatur Staley's. And they finally need to get their answer. Right now, Ryan Pace should be on the phone with Nick Cazario in Houston. And he should be saying the following. 
you know you're going to have to trade him eventually. You can say whatever you want, but you are trading Deshaun Watson. You have, in fact, already traded him. You just don't know it yet. So before all these other teams start figuring out who their quarterbacks are going to be and you lose your leverage, here's my best offer. Let's make this deal today. The Chicago Bears and Houston Texans should make a deal to bring Deshaun Watson to the Bears immediately. Rob Ninkovich from Chicago, what do you think? Greeny, I love it. I love it. And yes, I agree with you. They need to move on from, I, he's a young quarterback. I get it. He's a very young quarterback. He could be your franchise quarterback for the next 10 years. But when you have that, that I guess it's just bad chemistry that it would trickle down to the rest of the team, you have to think about what that sends the message to the rest of the team. They're not even saying his name. They're not even calling him Deshaun Watson. They're saying the player. So that's kind of disrespectful in itself. And if you continue to drag this thing on, you get into the, the, the say, training camp, and he's not reporting, it's just going to make the whole thing poor for the rest of the team. So trade him, get as much as you can, and b start fresh. Hit the reset button, get as much as you can for the young player. What do you think, Canty? Greeny, this would all be so much simpler had Ryan Pace, their general manager, done the right thing in 2017 <laughs> and drafted Deshaun Watson rather than go with Mitch Trubisky. But ultimately, this is about the job security of the general manager and the head coach. Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace, they don't have a whole lot of time. They backdoored their way into the postseason this past year because the NFC West cannibalized themselves, the NFC South was top-heavy, and the NFC East was historically bad. So I, I don't know that Mitch Trubisky, Nick Foles' quarterback play, is going to put you in a position where you can get back to the postseason. So I think you got to try to find an upgrade, and Deshaun Watson is the upgrade of all upgrades this offseason. If you can make the deal happen, then go ahead and leverage the organization to the hill and send that compensation to Houston and make the trade. Did you see that note that Hembo put up there? They're the only franchise to never have a 4,000-yard passer. They are a founding franchise of the National Football League. They have been around as long as the sport has been played. Field Yates, what do you think of this one? Greeny, if this trade ever came to life, the minute Shefty tweeted it, Deshaun Watson becomes the greatest quarterback in Bears franchise history. <laughs> so, so far on your list, I have semi-agree with a couple of the ideas. If anybody disagrees with the idea that the Bears need to be all in to the max on Deshaun Watson, then they are just ignoring facts or they are a Packers fan. That's the only way that you wouldn't be on board with this proposed trade. I would say that candidly, that just the fact we are talking about this is already the best thing that's ever happened to the Bears quarterback situation <laughs> no in question. their history. Very quickly, Field, how does it work? I mean, how does the deal sound as far as that's concerned? The Bears don't have. We keep talking about the Jets have all these picks. The Dolphins have all these picks. The Bears are not in that kind of situation. Can they make a deal that the Texans will be able to live with? Yeah, they're going to have to do this, Greeny. Three first-round picks. And they're going to have to find any appealing young player in a rookie contract on their roster and say, Houston, does this player appeal to you? Jalen Johnson, their second-round pick last year out of Utah, good young cornerback. That's the kind of capital you're going to have to be looking at. Three first-round picks, multiple second-round picks, and multiple starters on rookie contracts. Otherwise, it's a non-starter for Houston. But if I'm Ryan Pace, I, I'm not taking no for an answer. I am calling Nick Casario every hour of the day until a deal is done with Deshaun Watson one way or another. Yeah, I, I'm with you on that. And it's worth reminding, again, the Bears and Ryan Pace did bypass not only Deshaun Watson, but also Patrick Mahomes in that draft that year to trade up to take Mitchell Trubisky. Okay, my next on my green list of things that could, should, or will happen this offseason is that I've come to the conclusion the New York Jets should try one more season with Sam Darnold as their quarterback and trade the number two pick in this draft. Sam Darnold has never been surrounded by anything that would give a quarterback a chance to succeed. He's had terrible coaching. He's had terrible talent around him. He's had no opportunity whatsoever to succeed. And here's further reason why I am a somewhat um, skeptical of the Jets taking a quarterback in this draft. Mel Kuyper, in responding to a question on a mailbag, was asked to look at this year's draft class and last year's. And outside of Trevor Lawrence, he likes all of last year's quarterbacks better than all of this year's. So if Zach Wilson, who was the presumptive number two pick, is at best a 50-50 proposition, I think so is Darnold. 
and you could get a king's ransom for that second pick. Now, Chris Canty hosts a local talk show in New York City on ESPN New York, and the second I said this, I saw your head go like this. Yeah, Greeny, so my, go ahead, why? my mind is about to explode, because I thought you were with me with the Jets taking a quarterback with the second overall pick. My biggest thing with Sam Darnold is we come up with all of these excuses, and, and maybe there are more reasons as to why he hasn't had success in his first three years with the Jets, but those reasons don't help you figure out whether or not he can play quarterback in the NFL. And that's the biggest thing. Like the value proposition that you have with the second overall pick, the Jets can take the chance on the potential of Zach Wilson, a guy that we haven't seen fail in the NFL, versus rolling the dice with Sam Darnold again and betting that Rob Sala and Joe Douglas can get him fixed. I just think it's too big of a risk for Joe Douglas to take. Everybody recognizes that he's not. Sam Donald is not Joe Douglas's quarterback. He didn't draft him. But the minute that he passes on taking a quarterback with the second overall pick, Sam Donald and Joe Douglas are married together. Can I just say this, though? In, in terms of compensation, Hembo sent this to me, so I'm reading this off of my phone because we were talking about this. The last time a team traded for the second pick in the draft, the Cleveland Browns, in exchange in that deal that turned out to be Carson Wentz, the Browns got two ones, a two, a three, and a four. That's the value of the second pick. So if you're the Jets, would you rather have Sam Darnold and something like that or the 50-50 proposition that is the kid in the draft? No, I would go with the 50-50 proposition because quarterback is the most important position in the sport. It's the most important position in all of team sports. If you don't have a quarterback, it's hard to win in the National Football League. The Cleveland Browns didn't start winning until they figured out the issue of quarterback with Baker Mayfield. So that just speaks to the importance of the position. If you don't have a quarterback, it's going to be hard to win. The Jets got to find a quarterback. I don't think Sam Donald is the answer. Okay, you're much bigger than me, so I'm going to stop yelling at you and let me go over here. Uh, to Field Yates, who is the only person I know who's not bigger than me. Yates, what do you think of this? First of all, Greeny, I've been working out, so uh, don't get too confident over there. But, <laughs> Greeny, it took the Browns four years to get to the playoffs after making that trade, which also included multiple head coach and general manager trades uh, changes. I want you, Greeny, to enjoy your Sundays on the couch with your son. I want you to have something to look forward to when you watch Jets football games on Sunday. The Jets need to trade or make, make a move at number two for a quarterback and then figure out whatever it is with Sam Brown, trading him away or keeping him on the roster as a backup, which seems unlikely. You need to restart the clock here. Sam Darnold is one year away 